Many people who I know who were farm workers, even people in my, in my own family, had experienced sexual harassment and violence. There just were no services to help people with that problem. are joining forces now to say time's up. That is the name of a new coalition formed to address sexual harassment issues in the entertainment industry and actually in workplaces nationwide. I'd never done a live interview like that one before and I was definitely scared. There was a point in the interview when the reporter said something, I think it was well intentioned, but it just came out the wrong way. The Hollywood actresses in that industry, which you think of as a high profile industry mm -hmm. and women who do have a lot of power. And yet the focus here now through this Time's Up campaign is for women who don't have that power. Women just working in. And even though I was completely terrified of that interview, like that comment just like struck me in a way. It just didn't sit well because I feel like that's been part of the 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 misconception about farm worker women and other low-paid women. People think that farm worker women are not powerful. Farm worker women are very powerful and have been organizing for a long time around this issue. And we have the experience, not just of having suffered from this problem, but we also have the experience of years of organizing that we wanted to bring forward to support the women in Hollywood. To some people, the movement in their eyes began on January 1st, 2018, when Time's Up was announced, or maybe some, th some think that the movement began on October 15th of 2017, when the Me Too breakthrough moment happened. But the truth is that there have been many people who've been working across the country on anti-sexual violence measures for many, many years. Tarana Burke started her project in 2006, long before the breakthrough moment. Farmworker women as a movement have been organizing around that issue um, for more than three decades. There are also women in hotels and janitors and, and so many other industries that have been mobilizing to try to combat the problem because it's something they experience every day. And I actually believe that it was the long track record and the foundation that was set on this work years and years ago that made it possible for us to really take advantage of the breakthrough moments when they happened. There's a misconception that in movements, all the work happens at the national level. And that you see um, sort of, you know, maybe one or two leaders who are speaking for thousands and thousands of people as national representatives. But what you don't see is the groups of five and 10 people who are gathering in their local coffee shop or who, you know, are pulling people together to, you know, carpool, to go to a bigger city, to go to a march, et cetera. And the work that we're doing locally, we're connecting it with the work that we're doing nationally. So as we're having conversations like It's the small groups of people, it's the five and 10 people who are like-minded, who come together and get behind a cause that are really um, the heart of the movements that we're leading. We can make the biggest change by building coalitions and building power in the local communities where we live and where we work. And if we can make change at the local level, then we can help drive change at the national level.